Sampson, Vice Chairman Technical of the 15th Electrical Electronic Insulation Conference. It gives me great pleasure to introduce one of the best papers presented at the 1981 conference. It was given by Dr. T. V. Umen, Senior Development Engineer, Westinghouse Electric Corporation, Muncie, Indiana. The paper is entitled Cellulose Aging Determined by Intrinsic Viscosity. Cellulose is the best known naturally available insulation material used in high voltage electrical equipment such as power transformers, cables and capacitors. The useful life of the electrical equipment is determined by the integrity of the cellulose insulation in equipment that uses such insulation. Over a period of time, the insulation degrades and the useful properties deteriorate, and this is usually referred to as aging. By measuring the physical properties, such as the mechanical strength properties, we can get an average idea of the degree of aging, and this is frequently done in laboratories. But to get a better idea of the aging, or I should say the true measure of aging, uh, one should have a knowledge of the degradation of the cellulose molecule at the molecular level. And this is what the subject of my presentation today. Before going into uh, the details of the fine structure of cellulose and how we can use those, uh, that type of information to, to measure the degree of aging, uh, let me uh, show you a couple of slides regarding the uh, application of cellulose in uh, some electrical equipment. The first slide shows the view of a transformer under preparation. It's a large power transformer and it uses uh, several tons of insulation material, which consists of a uh, press board and uh, cellulose tape. And this material is uh, scrupulously dried and put into a vapor term for drying. And uh, once it is dried, the moisture is removed uh, the insulation materials do not degrade as fast as uh, otherwise. Uh, even then, over a period of time, I'm talking about many years, the material will gradually degrade because of various kinds of degradation re reactions taking place. And uh, the next slide will show you why uh, the, the, the next slide is uh, actually a piece of a uh, couple of pieces of insulation materials uh, artificially aged and uh, it gives you an appearance of what the aging does uh, to the cellulose. Uh, some of them are darkened and the darkening is due to the aging. But if you are able to touch it physically, they are very brittle. And that is uh, considered to be the end point of the lifetime of the insulation. Uh, and. Uh, The next slide gives you a, a schematic view of the molecular structure of cellulose. This is, a, I think, very important uh, in our present uh, uh, consideration to understand the, 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 the technique used in the measurement. The, the schematic diagram shows uh, a fiber uh, in cross-section. A fiber is extremely small. Uh, only a few millimeters long and very thin. And the fiber has an extremely complex microstructure 
and the first uh, small structure we can call a fibril. And the fibril itself is consisting of microfibrils. And the microfibrils uh, contain in them the actual molecular chains. Uh, the bottom part of the drawing uh, shows a schematic picture of the cellulose molecule. And it is a chemical uh, polymer of the monomer, which is anhydroglucose unit. And you can see that uh, the, the units repeat themselves. And in a typical molecule, in the insulation material as it is fresh, the number of monomer units is about 1,000 or 1,500. And we refer this number as the degree of uh, polymerization, uh, briefly referred to as DP. And uh, this term will be used over and over again in the presentation in the next few minutes. Well, there's one more picture I wanted to show. This is a, a molecular model, a framework model that I just uh, put it together in the laboratory just for a display. And uh, this shows only four uh, units of the monomers. And this is uh, sometimes very useful to understand the structure of cellulose. Well, with that, uh, I, this slide shows the, that the, present, the topic that we are going to cover, uh, we can term it as the degree of polymerization. Uh, that is the technique that we are going to use in the measurement. Uh, how it is related to the measurement will be explained in the next slides. Well, here is the laboratory setup uh, to measure the degree of polymerization. I should say that uh, uh, in simple terms, what we are essentially measuring is the viscosity of a solution uh, in which uh, the cellulosic material is dissolved. And that can be related to the degree of polymerization. And the degree of polymerization, as I said earlier, is the measure of the integrity of the cellulose molecule. Uh, so. Uh, the, the experimental setup shown here is very simple, and uh, most laboratories can afford to uh, have a setup like this for less than $1,000. Uh, the essential parts of the, the equipment uh, is the a viscometer, which is immersed in a constant temperature uh, bath, usually maintained at 20 degrees centigrade. And the viscometer can, has a solution of uh, cellulose. This solvent that we use frequently is called a uh, diamine. It's a very deep purple solution. And uh, it takes a, a few hours for the cellulose materials to dissolve in the uh, solvent. So in the right part of the diagram or the picture, you see a, an amber bottle in which uh, the cellulose solution is equilibrated by stirring with a magnetic stirrer for a few hours. Uh, once the solution is made, and it is transferred to the viscometer. It is a very simple matter from there. All we have to do is to uh, measure the flow time for the solution. And the flow time can be related to the viscosity. And as I told earlier, viscosity can then be related to the DP. Now, this may, be, this may sound like a mystery to you, but I will very briefly uh, go through some of the relationships uh, used in you don't have to worry about it that very detail at this time, but uh, just to show that there are definite relationships derived uh, for the uh, evaluation of DP. Well, the, this slide shows that uh, the primary relationship is uh, between what is called intrinsic viscosity and the molecular weight designated by M. So intrinsic viscosity of the solution is proportional or directly proportional to the, the molecular weight. But molecular weight is actually a product of the degree of polymerization and the weight of the monomer, which in this case is the glucose unit. And so we can say that uh, the intrinsic viscosity is directly related to dP, as shown in the bottom part of the equation. So the a fundamental equation is actually uh, the intrinsic viscosity is equal to a constant times the dp. And 
when dp is determined by viscometric method we usually call it the dpv and you will note that uh, the dp we are referring to is an average value because uh, each molecule or each chain has a different slightly different molecular uh, chain length so what we get is an average value continuing along the same line uh, the intrinsic viscosity itself is not directly measured it is obtained from what is known as the specific viscosity and the specific viscosity is obtained by measuring the uh, viscosity of the solution and the solvent as you will see in the bottom part of the slide and this fortunately turns out to be um, uh, expressed in terms of the efflux time for the solution and the solvent. In other words, all we need to know is the efflux time for the cellulose solution and a blank consisting of the solvent. So once we get that, we can easily evaluate the specific viscosity and from that we can go back to the intrinsic viscosity and then go back to the DP. Uh, to illustrate all this, uh, let me give you an, uh, an example. Well, typically the sample weight is about 25 milligrams, and um, in this case we have to always take into account the dry weight of the material. So we have to separately determine the um, moisture content and then make an adjustment and determine the uh, dry weight of the sample. And once we get the dry weight of the sample, uh, you can find out the concentration uh, in, it is recommended that we use approximately 45 milliliters of the solution. So you convert that into um, concentration in grams per 100 ml of the solution. That is the C that we use in the equation. And the typical flux time for this experiment is uh, for the solution, it is 132.8 seconds, and for the solvent, it is 94.2 seconds. And so you see, you can easily work out that uh, the DP will be around 965. Uh, it is as simple as that. So even though it may sound very complicated at the beginning, the true, once you get the efflux time, uh, you can compute the DP in a matter of a uh, few seconds. Well, now let's go to some of the applications of uh, the DP measurement. And I'm sure that you are all interested in the application part of it. Uh, Depending on what the electrical equipment that we, you are using or the experiment you are involved in with cellulose, you can devise a lot of uh, applications. Uh, what I am going to refer to is mostly a refer, uh, uh, regarding the transformers, but that doesn't mean that it is confined to the transformers. It can be applied to any other instrument as well. So in this uh, first application, I'm going to discuss uh, about uh, how to determine insulation drying condition. You know, uh, that is the first thing. The insulation has to be scrupulously dry. Now, how do you determine drying? Uh, usually, people monitor the moisture content and determine and the, when the moisture loss is leveled off, and uh, that is the point at which the drying is uh, complete. Now, uh, that is good to do, and uh, it must be done. But the, a lot of the times that doesn't happen and it is found that uh, in, from our experience we found that we really have to look into the various factors that influence the drying condition. And so here are some of the factors that are the most important factors that are involved in, in determining the drying condition. Well, as you can see, uh, the first one is of course the sample type. What kind of sample do you have? And the fabrication process, if it is press board and uh, it is uh, calendared or uh, pre-compressed, it will need different drying times. If it is paper, it is a different matter. And uh, the sample size, how big is a sample do you have? And so you may have to adjust your drying conditions depending on the sample size and the bulk. Another important factor is uh, how you stack the samples. Uh, the stacking arrangement is important because if sometimes if the samples are too crowded, uh, it is not easy to get the interior part of the insulation tried out very well. So that is one uh, factor to be tested. And 
the temperature can be very important because you don't need to use a, a temperature that would be detrimental uh, to the insulation life. And you want to determine the optimum temperature condition and uh, the rate of increase of temperature. And then uh, are we going to use a vacuum or are you going to use an air oven? All these factors are important. And also, uh, the, finally, the, the initial moisture content that you uh, have in the sample can also be a factor in, in the time that is involved. So this, will, this means that, that there are a lot of things that we have to look into uh, before determining uh, the appropriate uh, trying condition. Now, this slide shows the results of one of our investigations in which uh, trying and optimum trying conditions uh, were to be determined. In this case, it was press board, uh, and it was a laboratory aging study. So before doing the aging study itself, we determined uh, how the parameters are going to be adjusted. So we monitored four different uh, factors here. Uh, you can see the temperature, uh, the variation of temperature, the moisture loss, the pressure will decrease as the moisture is uh, decreasing, and finally we also monitor the DP. Now, we can determine the appropriate uh, uh, drying condition without the DP by just looking at the moisture curve, a point like A in the figure uh, would be usually taken as the appropriate uh, uh, point. But the DP uh, assures that we don't have excessive degradation. If we extend the uh, drying time, we, we are unnecessarily decomposing the cellulose. In fact, uh, so the DP uh, tells us that it is not degrading more than 10%, and this is very typical. So yeah, what I'm saying is for your experiment, uh, if you have a different set of arrangement, you may have to regenerate similar set of curves uh, before uh, doing the experiment. So there is no textbook rule that you have to do it this way all the time. Well, the next application is uh, related to uh, aging. Uh, what is the long term or thermal stability of uh, various types of cellulosic materials? Now, this is a laboratory study in which, uh, suppose you have uh, six different types of uh, a conductor insulation, uh, you are looking into which is the best one to pick up. Now, this involves uh, what is known as an accelerated aging study. This takes uh, several months, but uh, before doing that, it is good to do a small scale, a quick uh, aging study like the one that is indicated in the figure. What we have done here is uh, you age the samples at uh, various temperatures for a small period, so like seven days. And uh, here you see um, uh, six samples, one through six, and the, the even or the odd numbered samples are actually plain paper samples. And the even numbers are the corresponding crepe samples. And uh, if you look at the right hand part of the curves, you find that at uh, 180 degrees, the the sample that had the lowest DP initially, that was the number six sample, uh, turns out to be the best uh, in uh, thermal stability. And in fact, the, the sample which had the highest DP turns out to be the, the worst. So this gives an indication that uh, uh, the DP, initial DP itself is not an indicator that it is going to behave uh, very well at all temperatures. But I, I, I want to emphasize that uh, for accurate measurement of the thermal stability characteristics, one has to do the long-term aging study. So this is not a substitute. Well, here is another interesting application which may not be uh, applicable for all situations, but in the transformer industry, especially if it's a large power transformer, uh, the transformers uh, have a frequently or occasionally hot overheating problem. And it is a very difficult thing to pinpoint where the hot spot is. Uh, sometimes we have cases where it was not possible to even visually locate the problem. In such cases, we usually disassemble the unit. And uh, in this case, a unit that was returned from the field 
was disassembled, but there was no visual damage. So we could not pinpoint the hot spot. So we determined that we will do the DP test. So what we did was uh, we take uh, several paper samples from various layers and uh, various coils. What you see on the top part is the what is called a pancake coil, and it has several turns, and the turns are wrapped with a cellulose insulation. Now, the results of the DP measurements are shown uh, in the bottom part of the table, and uh, it is given for each sample uh, based on the coil, number of the coil, and the turn. And if you look at that, you'll find that most of the DP values are around 900, 800, and so on, but there is one sample uh, where the DP is 582, which is a low number. So that is the suspected hot spot. And in, the, in this case, this is the 18th coil and the uh, 10 1B, and the B stands for the bottom part. Uh, we finally located that this was, was, this was a, a real diagnosis, and it was caused by an oil, over oil flow problem. So this was an extremely valuable study for uh, determining hot spots. Well, now comes probably the most important part of the uh, technique uh, in determining the aging characteristics. Now, what you see is a set of curves which uh, relate uh, a few mechanical properties of paper with uh, DP. In other words, uh, the percentage property of the various property is plotted against percentage of DP. What we are trying to find out here is uh, how is DP related to the, the, the mechanical property. Um, you know, many people usually uh, go by a 50% decrease in tensile strength as the end of life. This is very uh, well known. Uh, but this 50% has is a, not a magical number and uh, if you look at uh, from the previous discussion about the fiber structure and all that, uh, we can see that that itself cannot be an absolute criterion. The absolute criterion should be the DP. Uh, well, if you look at the figure, uh, we can get an idea of what 50% tensile corresponds to in the DP in the terms of DP. Another property is that bed strength. Uh, is uh, if you take 50% as a tensile strength. Uh, you can see that the best strength is much lower. It's more like 25%. Uh, so if, when you measure different mechanical properties, you have to use different criteria. That is another problem. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, for, if you go by the percentage of DP that is retained, you don't run into any problem. Uh, so this is a set of curves generated for a crepe craft paper that is actually being used in the tan insulation. And uh, we think that uh, this type of curves can be extremely useful in defining the degree of uh, aging uh, of the insulation. So from this figure, uh, we have constructed a table uh, which will help uh, to, to correlate the mechanical property and the DP property. Uh, I have taken only the lower part of the uh, property, 50%, uh, starting with the 50% tensile, or let's say uh, 30, which corresponds to about 30% of the DP that is retained. And that is equivalent to about 50% tensile strength. And if you look at the best strength, it will be about 25%. There is an allowance of plus or minus five because of the uh, uncertainty and the variability. And if you go by, if you de decide that uh, the end of life is 25% of DP, then, of course, you have to take 40% um, of uh, tensile or 20% uh, of uh, burst and so on. Now, the exact uh, point at which you say that it is the end of life, that is something that needs further investigation because um, the popular 50% uh, tensile or the equivalent 30 need not be uh, as sacred as it sounds. Uh, in fact, uh, there have been cases where transformers have been operating in the field for 35 years, and uh, when the DPs were measured on the insulation, it was close to 150. Uh, so, again, uh, I should caution that going by the percentage property can be 
sometimes a little bit risky because the, the percentage is based on the initial value. The initial value is high. Uh, if you go by the percentage, you are going to have a, a higher uh, cutoff value. So I would think that uh, if you want to determine the end of life, it is probably better to go by an absolute minimum value of DP, let's say 150 or 200 or 300, rather than going by the percentage. Now that is when you get to the, the age and determination of all the conditions. In this area, there is a little more, there is much scope for uh, study. Well, I'm going to conclude this uh, brief uh, discussion, presentation, and uh, what we have discussed so far is summarized uh, as follows. The first is that DP is a fundamental measure of the aging of in cellulose insulation. And the second uh, conclusion is that uh, mechanical properties can be related uh, to DP. And the final conclusion is that DP could be used as an evaluative and uh, a diagnostic, diagnostic tool. Thank you very much.